Hello, my friends. Today we are doing the field test for the Yarko watercolors. This set was recommended to me by my friend Kabocha, who said that she used it when she was just starting to use, learn how to watercolor, and that for a very, very inexpensive set, it is actually a very good set. And since I know many of you guys may not have the budget for more expensive watercolors, but you do wanna play with watercolors, I thought this would be a perfect video for you guys. Uh, for the unboxing swatch, you can click here to check that out. Um, this is a field test but I'm also going to talk about ways that we can use a set like this what sort of accommodations we can make to make it work for us so you can get the most out of your inexpensive watercolors if you're interested in more inexpensive watercolor reviews to downright cheap watercolor reviews head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com I have reviewed not only just watercolors in general but I specifically have reviewed Crayola dealer around simply watercolor and up and up washable watercolors so if you're looking at children's grade watercolors and how to make those work for you or how not to make those work for you check that out so I sketched this little illustration on some Fabriano watercolor paper you don't have to use Fabriano watercolor paper that's just what I use as a standard for most of my field tests and I inked it with the Sailor Mitzel Ida I believe or the Sakura Pigma FB um, let me grab a well I don't have the FB on hand but I have the MB so these are Copic marker proof they are waterproof I use these in a lot of my illustrations. You can find these at Michael's. You can find these on Amazon. They are easy to find. They're very inexpensive and they'll last you a while. So I really do recommend you go ahead and you invest in a set of these. And a set has three. It has the fine brush, the medium brush, and the big brush. This is the medium brush. And our next step for this illustration is to go ahead and erase the pencils and I'm going to use the Moo eraser Kabocha sent me in um, not in burn it box and this is an eraser you can find not quite quite everywhere but it is pretty easy to find you can get them down at Jerry's Artorama uh, you can get them on Amazon uh, if you don't have this Pentel makes a high polymer white eraser which you can get at Walmart very inexpensive so you can actually find these I got this on Amazon but you can find these at Jerry's you can find this at Jerry's uh, you can find the Fabriano paper at Jerry's. You can probably even find the Pigma FB at Jerry's. And this is not a sponsored video. This is not Jerry's Artorama didn't pay me money to do this. Um, but since we're talking about affordable, accessible art supplies, and so many of you do want to learn how to watercolor, I thought uh, just mention where I get my stuff and uh, hopefully that'll help you guys out. So we could use synthetics. Synthetics are your most affordable option for watercolor brushes. You can find them all sorts of places. And I have a mix. I happen to like Jerry's Artorama's Mimic Kalinsky. So that is fake Kalinsky, but Net Princeton Neptune is also pretty good. And Scepter Gold, which I think only Blick sells, are also pretty good. So I probably will not use entirely synthetics, but I will probably use a lot of synthetics. And that way, those of you who are on a tighter budget can maybe follow along a little bit better. And here are a, um, yeah, a, more, a couple more affordable natural hair brushes. This is a size four uh, Creative Mark Kalinsky Sable, their Rhapsody. These are fairly affordable and they'll last you a while. And then this is a Blick Master. This is a squirrel brush and it's also a really good inexpensive natural hair brush. It's nice to have a couple in your collection if you can afford it. Okay, so what I'm gonna want is I'm gonna want some blue tape and I'm gonna want something I can secure that to. And unfortunately, all of my nice Backer boards are in use, so I'm actually going to be cheap and I'm just going to use, <laughs> seriously, very cheap, recycle some garbage. Actually, I like using these because they can make for a nice handy little palette for your Zig Art and Graphic Twin markers, your Crayola markers. I mean, you know, there's really a lot of options. So I am, oh, it's just slightly out of reach. I'm tethered to my desk. 
blue painter's tape. This is 3M. You can get this at Walmart. I really like this and I use it for like all of my paintings. Um, I've tried watercolor, watercolor tape and I don't like it. So this is the stuff for me. And actually what I'm going to do, I do need to erase this. I don't know what I'm thinking. So I'm going to erase this and be right back. All right. So it is actually every time, every time I erase for you guys, I end up finding something that won't quite erase. So that was sketched with um, an HB mechanical pencil, really not anything fancy at all. Um, no, no $600 pencil here. I know some people think traditional artists use $600 pencils. I don't know where the heck they think we're buying those from. Uh, I get a lot of my pencils at Walmart. Alrighty, so we're going to secure this to the back. And since it is a full bleed illustration and fairly small, I am just going to roll up my blue tape and affix it to the back. Of fixing in. And then, and then, and then, and then one more. We don't actually need three. And you're going to want to be careful when you're removing it. All right. Now, the reason I have affixed it to this is we need it on a nice, stable surface. And I uh, don't, you could, you could tape it to your desk, but honey, I've got like 6,000 videos I got to record today. So I'm not doing that. And I found a nasty greasy spot on this thing. I don't know how that happened other than C-A-T-S. So I'm using some rubbing alcohol. I'm just going to remove that. And I was careful not to just randomly spray it because that is bad news. So you are going to need now, in addition to your brushes, you're gonna need the most expensive materials ever. You're gonna need a cup of clean water, ideally two, and some paper towels. And I know those can be really hard to find, but I believe in you. You might have to scrimp, you might have to save, you might have to babysit for that money, but I know you can get a cup of tap water and some paper towels. So I did tell a bit of a falsehood. You are, if you have one, you're gonna want a daisy palette. If you don't have a daisy palette, that's totally okay. You can honestly use like an old ceramic plate. Anything with dividers in it would be helpful. A lot of food packaging, like the plastic packaging will have that kind of stuff. You can also use the interior lid on your Yarka set. It doesn't have the divides, uh, so it's gonna be a little trickier to work with, but you can use it. And if you have it, some cheap pipettes and I honestly clean mine out and reuse them. Uh, and you can get like a hundred set of those on Amazon if you so desire. You can also find them at some art supply stores and you can probably find them at like CVS. Uh, so nothing on this table is super rare, super hard to find. Um, and I can provide links below to anything if that'll help you guys. Heck, I'm using an old, my cup is an old tea source container because it's metal and it holds a lot of water. Um, oh, you can use like drinking cups. You can use Dixie cups. It's not, not even a thing. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to fill some palettes with clean water and, um, at the Daniel Smith workshop I attended the other day, they did say to use distilled, but we are, I, I've never used distilled before. Not, not saying it's not valid because I have a lot of trouble painting when I'm in Luling and I think there's something in the water there and the humidity and the lighting um, and Luling. But, <laughs> so, so distilled water might be useful, but hey, we are working on a budget today. I wanna show you guys just how accessible watercolor painting can be. So we're just gonna use regular old tap. Now, if you have it, a little Mr. Bottle, you can get these at Dollar Tree or Walmart, um, a little Mr. Bottle and just mist your watercolor to activate them. Give them a couple seconds for it to soak in. That is how we do. And since we're painting Kara, we're going to be mixing up a Caucasian skin tone today. But, 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 but I want to start, 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 start with the background. So we have an interesting color selection in that we don't have a warm blue. We have a cool blue 
and we're just gonna mix it up in the big open well and we can wipe that down later. And we're just gonna hit the background with it using this big synthetic Neptune and this is a size 10. So I've been on the job hunt for something a little steadier than conventions every weekend that utilizes my abilities and talents. And there's so um, there's not a lot of great options for me here in Nashville. And so I've been signing up to like job sites. And ever since I made that mistake, I've been getting these really spammy calls from like Louisiana, which is my home state, but I don't live there anymore. Okay, we're gonna use the brush to absorb some of that excess water. And while we're, while we're doing things, we're gonna mix up a skin tone. And what I used to do back in the days before I had access to nicer watercolors is my skin tone uh, would be like yellow, a red, and a little bit of brown. So we're gonna grab a fair bit of yellow and we're gonna have to swatch, that's the thing about cheap watercolors is that you need to swatch your color so you know what you get. Because sometimes it can be hard. Let's grab this brighter, cooler red. Got light orange going, then a little bit of brown. Uh, words. Sometimes it can be hard to know what you get when you're mixing using a limited palette. And I actually did a lot of swatching on my Daniel Smith uh, six color essentials video. And I was able to mix all the colors I needed for that video using just six colors. Okay, so that's a, ba a, a decent base Caucasian skin tone. It is going to end up being really, really light. I'm gonna let this dry. Now, ideally you want to swatch on the same kind of paper uh, that you're painting on, but um, we're doing this on a budget and I know a lot of you guys would have a hard time justifying sacrificing a piece of watercolor paper just for swatching. I recommend that you do and you can use cheaper papers, but I understand and honestly, I usually, I'm just trying to see if I'm in the ballpark, I'll swatch on other types of paper too. But when you're learning, it really helps to swatch on the paper you actually intend to paint on. So I'm gonna let this dry and I'm also going to let my background dry. Okay, so even though that is drying, I am actually going to do another layer and I'm gonna sprinkle some salt in it. And this is kosher salt, but you can use like table salt. It doesn't have to be fancy. I don't even know if people consider kosher salt fancy or what, but you can use pretty much any kind of unflavored salt you have on, well, salt flavor is a flavor, but you know what I mean? Like no paprika, cause that's gonna like probably stain your paper, which could be cool. And we should totally play with kitchen spices at some point in time together. But today is not that day. And I know I need to also be talking about these Yarko watercolors. I haven't really gotten far enough into them yet to like have a real opinion. So I apologize for that. Skin tone looked like it mixed up okay. I could go a little pinker because Kara has slightly pinker skin. And I'm just gonna drip drop some of the salt in. And what it does is it, well, it does a few things. Uh, it can absorb some of the water. So it's gonna give a cool crystallation effect to the paper. And this is like a really, really easy technique to use to add just like a little bit of interest and texture to your watercolor without, you know, needing like a, a more developed skill set. Now we need to let that dry fully before we can progress. And I will zoomity zoomity zoom in for you guys. One day, one day I'll have a micro lens or macro is really the word we're looking for here. I'll have a macro lens and we can do like all kinds of cool stuff. But right now I'm rolling with a little camcorder and it beats the heck out of using a phone for this. So I'm grateful. But one day we'll have production values. I'm gonna sprinkle a little more salt in. You, it doesn't work super well if it's like pulled onto the paper. 
and it can be a really nice technique for making like snowflakes. Uh, that's not what I'm doing here. I just wanted some background texture because otherwise that blue wash is gonna be pretty uneventful. And then as always, we let it dry. All right, so once the paint dries, you're gonna wanna head on over to the trash can. And if, if you have a drafting brush, you can use that to brush away the salt. If you don't, you can use your hand. You could also probably use like if you have like a craft feather laying around, you could probably use that as well. Um, so I'm gonna go do that. And you're gonna want to remove all of the salt. It will affect your other layers. So you may have to pick at it with your fingernail. All right, so our skin tone has dried, but that's actually not what I'm doing next. What I'm doing next is I'm gonna pick up a little bit of yellow I'm going to, and I wish it was actually a more, a cooler yellow. What do they call it, like yellow hue? Cool hue is green hue, warm hue is red hue. We're going to do an all over wash with a very diluted, not diluted, diluted, a diluted yellow. It's gonna, A, it's gonna make the foreground a little warmer, help it pop a little bit. So far, these have been fairly easy to work with. I have worked with more expensive watercolors that have been harder to use. And then we're going to go in and we're gonna use our paper towel. We're gonna wring out some of the excess water that makes the brush thirsty and we're just going to pick up some of this excess water help prevent it from pooling on the paper all right tread beyond now we let that dry as well now that that layer has dried we have so we have two greens we have a brighter green and we have actually i can just show you guys although although if you want to see swatches of these please do check out my swatch and unbox video so we've got the brighter green and then we've got kind of a more sap green and which one do we want hmm i kind of want to go with the sap green or we could even mix the two and that way we could get something sort of in between but what i really really want to start out with is a green yellow so i'm going to mix a little bit of a little bit of b in that yellow grab a lot more yellow now with these, you're gonna have to mix a lot of paint to get the color you want because these are student grade. In fact, they're really technically they're children's grade, but they're pretty good for children's grade. Um, and they're not, I don't think they're necessarily using, they might be using glycerin as the binder, but it also could be gum arabic. Anyway, they don't have as much glycerin as Crayola seems to have. And I find Crayola hard, hard to actually layer and paint with as you guys can check out in my affordable art supply series uh, at natosoup.blogspot.com. So I'm going to just do a color fill where I fill the whole area in with one color uniformly. And this will be our base color for our leaves. And then I'm gonna soak up the excess water and that way we can get a more uniform dry time. I'll tell you guys something. I know I was calling the paper towels the most expensive part, but they're really one of the more valuable parts. It tends to get um, sort of underappreciated, underrepresented. You can use any kind, really. You can use napkins from McDonald's if that's what you got. I've done it before. Just make sure they're clean, don't have any grease, don't have any food. I know that should be an, an obvious, but if in doubt, just don't use it, just throw it out. All right, there we go. Already got some nice colors going in. Now I'm gonna grab a little bit of that background blue and I'm actually gonna use that as the shade in her eyes. And we're gonna just do 
the top half and I'll zoom it, zoom it, zoom. Zoom, boom, a foom it so you guys can see. And of course, we allow that to dry because that's what watercolor is. It's drying times. So this isn't exactly dry. It's still cool to the touch. I can do another layer on top of it though, or I can do a little bit of lifting, which I will demonstrate here on her arm. Now, normally that is such a minor area that I really wouldn't let it concern me, but I might as well demonstrate a very simple technique. So while it's still wet or even after dries, you can use a scrubby stiffer brush. This is where a synthetic is great. You apply clean water to it. So you can see we already got most of it up and then you just dab up the excess with a paper towel and that is a very easy way to make very simple corrections not that that was such a flawed area but you know it's always always good to know that sort of information all right so next i am going to what am i going to do guys i kind of want to set these leaves into the background so I'm gonna grab the cooler green. What would that be? Green, green shade. And I'm leaving the edges because it implies that they were a little sun kissed. Nice effect, very easy lighting effect. Doesn't really require a whole lot of skill, but it can really have a nice effect. Pick up some more of that green. It's okay to turn your paper as you need to. It's another reason why I didn't want to just tape it to the desktop. These are handling decently so far. I do wish we had, I mean, when you, okay. So when we think about student colors, they're going to pick not student, really children's colors. They're gonna, oh, I'm gonna have to clean that up. They're going to pick colors that are gonna be appealing to kids, that are gonna be useful for kids in their schoolwork. They're not necessarily gonna pick colors that make sense from like, if you were an art student or an artistic student or a student of the arts, or if you just wanted your kid to learn practical color theory instead of, um, well, I mean, there's, there's a couple of different approaches to color theory. There's additive color theory and there's subtractive color theory. One of them is based on light, which is great. And it's how we see color in the world, but it isn't how we paint color in the world. And it's a huge stumbling block for a lot of people learning about color. They'll draw in their sixth grade science lessons and be like, okay, that's how color works. Well, no, that's not how color works when you're working with additive color. What am I thinking? Subtract it. I'm talking about, okay. I'm talking about when, okay. So when you're mixing pigments, if you ran out of space on the card and caught me mid explanation. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to grab my other green, mix it in here. And I'm going to look it up and we'll have an official definition to go with, but the TLDR is the two different systems of thinking about color. One focuses on um, light, the other one fo focuses on pigment. The one most of us are taught in sixth grade science class focuses on light. That's how our eyes see the world, it's true. But it is not necessarily how paints will work on paper. And I do wish both were taught because it's just kind of a shame to ignore, you know, a useful. Anyway, so background leaves have a blue influence. Our foreground leaves have a yellow influence and we're gonna keep working on that. Now, I want to smooth out some of these light transitions. So I'm just gonna use clean water and a wet brush and we're just gonna dip it in and there's probably gonna be a little bit of blooming, but that's not really the end of the world. We're fine with that. We're not trying to paint anything too tight here. Maybe even a little bit of blooming will look good because they're, they're leaves. 
additive color works, that's the RGB color, and it is a method to create color by mixing a number of different light colors with shades of red, green, and blue being the most common primary colors used in additive color system. And this is when we're talking about lights, we're talking about computer screens, we're talking about projectors. Subtractive color explains the mixing of a limited set of dyes, inks, paint pigments, or natural colorants to create a wider range of colors, each resulting each the result of partially or completely subtracting, that is absorbing some wavelengths of light and not others. And that refers to paint. That's why when you mix all the colors together, you don't actually get black. You end up with like this really nasty, neutral kind of gray color. Um, and that is why with light, when you combine three different, well, RGB. When you combine RGB light sources, you're gonna end up with a white light. That's the whole prism thing, the prism, splits it off in different wavelengths. And both of those definitions came from Wikipedia. I had to look that up because I am just not, not my memory is just not that great. So I do wish both were taught and it's fine in my opinion, if you want to teach it differently. Um, like if you want to teach one in art classes and the other in your science classes, like that is understandable. It's just frustrating that it's not taught and then kids are given these palettes to use and they're not even very good palettes. It's just frustrating. Like I feel like we're really hindering our kids from learning how to make things they'll enjoy. So we're gonna go ahead and mix Kara's hair color to go with her skin color. And we don't have anything like what I normally use for her hair color. So I'm gonna grab a lot of this brown and some of this darker red since she has the, the color I use for that, the convenience color I use for that is Venetian red or Indian red. This does not have that. So we're gonna mix it. It's a very easy color to mix. And then we're going to swatch it. And I need to find my little, my little swatch booklet. booklet. And that could definitely be darker. So we're gonna grab a lot more brown. That's gonna be the problem with these paints. Uh, you can get the colors you want, but you're really gonna have to mix a lot of paint to get them. It's okay, we knew we were dealing with children's grade paints going into this. It's a little better. And of course, of course, of course, we have to let everything dry. Okay, dokily. So that is not completely dry, but it's mostly dried. We're gonna grab a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of that cool influenced green. We're putting it in a well here. Then we're gonna grab, is that purple? And that's a whatever. I don't know what color, that's blue. Okay. Sorry. And we're gonna mix a lot of that blue with that dark green. I don't necessarily sing a whole, well, I'll sing along to things. I usually listen to like cake when I'm painting, uh, but I don't normally sing a lot when it's just me. It's just for you guys. Gonna add some of this darker blue green here in the background. See, hmm, things that read as quote unquote hot. So bright yellow things, red things, just warm things seem to pop into the foreground. Whereas cool tone things, blues, certain purples, etc., seem to recede into the back. Now, the same can be said for saturation. Saturated things, regardless of their color, seem to pop into the foreground, whereas desaturated things, like gray, seem to recede into the background. So what we're doing is we're kind of pushing these leaves further back. And I, you know, I can recite this stuff but if I'm doing a complicated piece and I'm busy or I'm distracted or I'm trying to juggle three things at once, which is my my big problem, um, I forget it too. So just because you know something or can recite something doesn't mean it's really become second nature until you've practiced and practiced and practiced and practiced. That's why doing studies and thinking about what you're doing while you're doing studies is a really wise idea. Okay. 
I'm going to, actually, I might just leave that like that. good huh at least I think so now we're gonna grab some of that more yellow influence that warmer green maybe even grab too much might be too saturated there we go I think by now you guys know what words are gonna come out of my mouth next we gotta let this dry but talking about these as Yarka I am pleased with the color clarity I'm pleased with the ability to layer these one layer after another. I've noticed that with cheaper watercolors um, and I'm noticing a little bit of uh, glycerin buildup where I've really applied it heavily. But in general, these handle so much better than what is rightfully their competition, the Crayolas and the the um, washable watercolor markers, the uh, washable watercolors, watercolors for kids. Now I have used Yarka professional grade watercolors in the past. That's what I used to paint Kara with. And I really like those and I need to pull that set out again and do an official review. So Yarka does make good watercolors and these are really not bad either. They probably have a little bit more glycerin in them so that they can um, wash out a clothes a little more easily. Now Kabocha did point out that uh, these have a heavy pigment load. So unlike perhaps, uh, Crayola, these may use pigment instead of dyes, and that may make them staining, but it also may make them perform a little bit better. Now, we're not testing, I'm not a mom, we're not testing for how well these come out of clothes. That is not this channel, and that is not me. Um, it could be. If you guys really, 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 really want to see that, uh, you can join my Patreon and make your voice note heard and we can do that. But that's not my goal here today. My goal here today is to see how well these handle as watercolors, not how washable they are. And um, for the price, I think I paid like $8 for them, which I know for those of you who are used to painting with Crayola specifically, that sounds like a king's ransom because that's like four times the cost. But if you're used to professional grade watercolors, or even like middle grade, student grade watercolors, that's a really good price and they're performing pretty well. So I am pretty pleased with these. Now the proof is gonna be in the pudding when we start painting Kara because then we're really dealing with mixtures of color. Um, so that's really the true test, but so far so good. So this isn't entirely dry. You guys can see areas that are still shiny. Part of what is keeping it still shiny is there is a, a lot of binder in these. It's either gum Arabic or glycerin. Now, um, Kabocha would probably know better than I do because she plays around with that a little bit more than I do. Um, I'm thinking it's glycerin because these sort of moist cakes, the glycerin is what actually keeps them so moist. Uh, gum Arabic tends to dry a little bit harder like your traditional artist pans, although some of the cheaper ones will use glycerin. And it's not so much that glycerin is a glycerin isn't necessarily a deal killer. It's not necessarily a big problem, but it just, it can make it harder to paint. Now, you know, dealing with uh, children's grade art supplies, dealing with very inexpensive art supplies, kind of par for the course. So it's not the biggest complaint, especially when you compare them to, you know, their direct competition. Okay, gonna stir the skin tone up and we're gonna have to apply it judiciously because there are some, we're working around all those wet areas. And as you guys can see, that reactivated that bit of green. So we're just gonna fold up a tiny little wad of paper towel and dab that up. And I'm doing a fill here. So I'm just going to fill in all of her skin with this color. So there's really no point in zooming in on this because we're not doing anything and the proof is going to be in the pudding when we let this dry. Now, I do need to give you guys a disclaimer. I am heading off to go get a haircut. And I'm going to finish just this layer of her skin and then I'm going to go. And I will probably be gone for an hour, an hour and a half. There's going to be some evaporation in my paints. Um, I don't, because I've never used Yarka in this capacity before with this brand. I don't know if there's going to be a lot of evaporation. I don't know if there's going to be just a little bit. I don't know 
how it's going to affect my paints. But I did want to let you guys know about that because it might drastically change the working properties and um, it might affect how you are able to use these paints. So that is just a heads up. But so far, skin tone is decent. It was fairly easy to mix. Didn't require like six different swatches. We'll see how light it dries. I return it. It has had plenty of time to dry. I want to go ahead and add a little bit of color pink to her cheeks. I'm actually going to go with the bluer red. And we'll just apply it. And if you guys ever have any questions about using watercolor, painting with watercolor, and you'd like a demonstration or if you just want me to answer, let me know. You can let me know in any watercolor video. You can email me, you can tweet at me, but I can't help you if I don't know what you need to know. Okay, so we've applied a little bit of blush and while that dries, we'll go ahead and do her shirt. Hmm. Now, what color do we want? We could do purple, we could do red, maybe orange. So I'll go ahead and pick up some of the orange directly from the palette. If I'd been smarty for the party, I would have gone ahead and toned that area. Have to clean that up in a bit. And then we're going to go ahead and pick up any of the pooled paint. And it seems I did a big old drop right there on one of those leaves. I'll just leave it, I'll let it evaporate and that way we won't have as much lifting issues. All right, and give that a moment or a little while to dry. The shirt has mostly dried, not entirely dried. So we're gonna do a little bit of correction. Gonna do a little bit of lifting, not heavy lifting, just light lifting. There we go. And I guess we can go ahead and get started on her hair. So uh, let me actually zoom out so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm stirring it up since it's settled for about an hour. And I am going to try and leave natural highlights by just being careful with my brushwork. Go ahead and get her eyes. This is a good color for her freckles. Well, maybe a little darker, but. So we need to let that dry as well. So that dried really quickly, surprisingly quickly. Uh, next, Ali, I think I'm actually going to do the shadow color for her skin. So I'm going to grab some purple. Using one of our pre-filled wells and then some of the blue red. We want sort of a red violet color. All right, switchy swatch. Mm, that's kind of weak. So we're gonna grab some more red. A little more purple. Try that out again, it's a little better. And I'm gonna grab one of my synthetics. I know I've been painting a lot with the Blick Squirrel. And then we're just going to use this to shade her skin. And up here as well. And we're gonna do more layers of skin tone, but I'm not sure how much 
these inexpensive paints will lift. So I want to try and use my art order of operations that will best suit the materials we're using. Tends to be the key for using cheap art supplies is to figure out the magic order where you can get the best results out of them. Okay, do a little blenderoo out. And then, of course, you gotta give it time to dry. So that dried, I'm actually gonna go in and do a little bit more shading along the face, but otherwise I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. And maybe a little bit here and here. Now I want to add a little bit of toning to that orange, which might ruin it, we'll find out. And what I wanna do with that is I wanna grab some of that blue and let me zoom out so you guys can see what I'm doing. Grab some of that blue and then grab some of that blue green. We could just use the stuff we already mixed. And in a really light, I guess I have to wait though until the skin shadow has dried now that I look at it. It seems that her underarm has dried enough that we can do what we need to do. And this ought to work. If it doesn't lift up that orange, I will be impressed because that's definitely a shortcoming of cheaper watercolor, even nicer watercolors will do that. Doing a glaze on top is sometimes not, not the best choice. Um, but it actually seems to be, oh, there we go. A little bit, a little bit of lifting. And you know what? If I were, even if I were using nicer watercolors, I would use a soft brush. I wouldn't use a synthetic because a synthetic has the tendency to lift pigment up anyway. So, you know, considering we're using a synthetic brush, it's a little uh, stiffer, a little harder than what I would normally use. This is not a bad result. And we're gonna go over this again with another layer of orange. Go in now with a little more saturated blue-green and I'm just gonna float and float is where you just sort of dab that color on top very gently. There we go. So far I'm pretty pleased with it. Um, and I kind of want to do her hair but I kind of want to mix it darker and I might regret this but I might not. I will zoom it, zoom it, zoom, 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 zoom out. We're gonna grab some more brown. We're gonna try to mix this hair color a little more saturated. So we're grabbing a lot of brown. We're grabbing some red and then we're gonna swatch it and we just want I think that's gonna be more saturated good all right so for cheap watercolor these are actually pretty mixable and you get plenty not that I've ever been the one to be excited about a buffet but I know since we're using more trying to get the saturation we want it's nice that we are provided with more. And I don't wanna call these cakes cause they're kind of poured watercolors, but the amount we're getting is pretty generous. And the well itself is quite large. So those of you who do brush lettering and you wanna do larger pieces, these might be decent watercolors for what you're looking to do don't know about the light fastness. Learned an interesting piece of information today though, or not today, I'm so sorry. I learned an interesting piece of information over the weekend at Hands-On Creativity. There is a special machine that they use that uses these like crazy high wattage, high intensity light bulbs and it basically can test light fastness, like the light fastness of 100 years in four days. Now, when I do light fastness tests, 
and I try not to do too many of them because that is space and effort that I don't feel like expending when the information is usually available online. Um, I just put it in my window, which is not effective and that window, none of our windows really get a lot of light anyway. So, you know, it's not really the best way to test for light fastness. And the only reason I did that is because somebody was talking smack about Soho watercolors having like a crazy short light fast life. So I was like, fine, I'll put it in the window and see. But in general, I don't really feel like doing light fastness tests. I don't have the setup for it. I don't have the space for it and I don't get paid for it. And that information is online, so. I really recommend, unless it's of vital importance and you really doubt the veracity of the manufacturer, I'd really just recommend going with what they have to say. All right, so I have applied the first layer of freckles. I need to let everything dry. Okay, so here we go with a little bit more of the orange. And if this doesn't work out super well, we can always mix one of our two reds in there. But I wanted to go with a blue-green because I wanted it to be color influence from the leaves surrounding Kara. And then we're going to blend some of this out, just a little, and give that a chance to dry. Zoom in so you guys can see better. So while that dries, and it's looking a little bit like a hot mess, but that is okay. We're here to learn, we're here to play. I'm gonna do another layer on Kara's skin, and it might, I might need to mix it darker. I will probably need to mix it darker soon. We can probably get one more layer out of it, but we, so, and I need to avoid this area because that's all wet over there. So with watercolor, if you want things not to look muddy, you need to build up uh, contrast. And right now, this color is just not really enough of a contrast from the layer that went before. Now we can get away with this for like one, maybe two layers, but it's just not gonna last. It's not, not a good situation. So we will finish with this layer here. And, uh, ooh, 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 I need to be careful because there could be bleeding. And then I'm going to go in and absorb some of the color, help disperse it a little bit better. All right. So, zoom out. First, we're gonna make a swatch of our existing skin tone. So this is our skin tone. Now we're gonna ruin that skin tone by mixing in more color. And I have, a, I have polluted my yellow by adding a lot of green. So I'm gonna work very carefully away from that. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create a more saturated version of the color we currently have. So it doesn't necessarily need to be darker it needs to be more saturated. And one of the ways we can do that is we can allow some of the water to evaporate out. That looks a little bit better. But that takes time and since we're working with cheap watercolors we don't know what's going to happen with that. With the Crayola um, the amount of glycerin made it kind of really hard to use. So that isn't necessarily the best choice. So mixing it darker is probably a better option. And I will allow this to dry and then check back in. All right, guys, so that's had a chance to dry. We have remixed our skin tone to be a little bit more, sa more saturated. Going in now with that 
darker skin tone. Now, sometimes with little pieces like this, I have a hard time controlling it with the Blick Squirrel, but I'm trying not to scrape up prior layers, which is a problem I've been having with the synthetics. So it's kind of a catch-22. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now I'm not really happy with the orange on her shirt. I'm not really happy with what I did to the orange on her shirt. Ooh, did you see that? So I've had water just kind of sitting in it and it just picks up like a big gloppy, big gloppy amount, which, you know, not the end of the world, especially since we are using inexpensive watercolors, but it's something to be aware of. And it's something that less experienced artists might have trouble compensating for or knowing how to deal with. So I mix some red in there, warm it up a little bit, and I'm gonna try to sort of glaze over some of the areas that read as muddy. See if we can't fix some of those problems. And we might not be able to, that does happen. And then I'm gonna let that dry. So next I am going to darken some of the sh shadow shading a little bit. Okay. And I also want to add more blush to her cheeks, but I need to wait to do that. And I also want to darken her hair. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to grab a little bit of the red brown we made earlier for the first few layers of her hair. And we're gonna grab a little more brown, although the brown as is isn't gonna really get us where we're going with this. Just trying to saturate it a little more. So I'm gonna grab some black since the brown that comes with the Yarkaset isn't really that dark of a brown. Now, I am I would prefer to mix in a sepia if I were using my preferred watercolor. If I were using my regular watercolors, I would use a sepia, I wouldn't use a black. But as I learned with my Koi set, you can get a much darker brown by mixing in some black and it will still retain a lot of the richness and saturation that you can get with a brown. Now, this brown here, is kind of a weak brown. So we're gonna add in some more of that red and then go back and grab some more of that black. And of course, we need to swatch. And it's got kind of like, mentally, I think of it like a milky sort of texture. It's not really what I want and it's going to dry a lot lighter, but I don't know that I'm going to be able to get it darker. Um, I'm not sure if these paints are using like chalk or talc as optical brighteners. Uh, they could be. If that's the case, then honestly, the more layers we do, the just it's just going to get chalkier and chalkier. It's not going to improve. Get a little purple here on the inside of her sleeve while I am waiting. Also, it tends to get goopy and soapy, which, I mean, it's taken longer for it to get goopy soapy than the Crayolas did, but it's still kind of a frustrating thing to have to work around. It is definitely not my favorite. Let's see, where's my little spray bottle? Hmm, there it is. I'm gonna want that blue green in a little bit. Oh, it looks like her face has mostly dried. So we're gonna use this dark brown and I'll go ahead and zoom in for you guys. That's not so bad. Probably not gonna be able to get it a whole lot darker than that. Having a little trouble controlling this mimic. And the paper is buckling, kipping up a little bit. It's not too bad, but it does make control a little bit harder. That's why I would normally 
do a better job of securing something like this down. Now afterwards, if you want it to be completely flat, which can kind of help if you're going to scan this, uh, you can store it underneath some heavy books or in between some heavy books for about a week and that'll help flatten it out. Now, generally, when doing watercolors and watercolor tutorials, I like to use a little bit of white to help pop some highlights out into this. Now, this set doesn't come with a white, and I don't actually have any white Crayola pencils here. So, what I might do is use some of my Bleed Proof Pro White to get those highlights. Now I know that's not something all of you guys would have, although it is, I mean, any sort of like white gouache, any sort of white um, additive, it's something I would normally recommend if you're interested in doing illustrative watercolors or watercolor comics. It's really a worthwhile investment blending out that cheek blush a little bit more. And I'll give that a chance to dry. So as you guys can see, her hair dried a lot lighter than it went down. Next, I want to darken the background a bit. And as these paints absorb water, they get kind of goopy, <laughs> kind of I want to say boogery, kind of soapy. A little harder to use as they absorb their water. And I know nicer paints that can happen too. So it's not necessarily a reflection of the paints, just something to keep in mind. It may affect their usability. Then after this has a chance to dry, I'm gonna add a few little highlights using that Pro White I was telling you guys about. And we'll be about done. So I am going to add some white details with this uh, Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. If you have it, you can use white gouache, you can use um, Copic Opaque White. I find that gel pens don't like to draw over watercolor. I have an easier time using gel pens over marker. So I'm just going to scoop some up and put it on my palette. A little bit goes a fairly long way. And just use it to pop a few highlights in here or in there. And I'm using a fairly bristled synthetic. And I'm gonna do a cute little paisley pattern. I'm just gonna freehand it. Uh, in the past, I've needed to draw it out, so there's no shame in sketching out what you need, especially if you're not confident in doing it in brush first. And if you guys are new to my channel, if this is your first video of mine, welcome. I hope this was a helpful video for you guys. I do a lot of watercolor tutorials here on the channel and over at natosoup.blogspot.com. In fact, I have a free watercolor course designed to not only familiarize you with a variety of watercolor materials, but also inspire and encourage you to paint watercolor illustrations or watercolor comics if you so desire. And you can find that at natosoup.blogspot.com. And that is based on my experiences painting the Kidlit comic, Seven Inch Kara. And you can read that as a web comic now at 7inchcara.com or 7inchcara.tumblr.com. 
and that comic is a member of a larger webcomic collective called Ink Drop Cafe. So if you like webcomics, you should definitely check that out at inkdropcafe.com. And if you have any questions about watercolor, you can always hit me up in my comment section. You can send me an email or you can ask me on Twitter. Whatever is comfortable for you is good for me. Now I'm gonna add just a little bit of white here and here. But we are basically done. So that was the field test for Grab the Insect, the Yarka Rama watercolors. These were imported by Jack Richson. Um, you can find this using the link below in my description on Amazon. You can also pick these up at Jerry's Art of Rama. I found these watercolors to be much easier to use than their Crayola or Up and Up counterparts. Now I haven't tested every children's grade watercolor on the market ever. If that is something you really wanna see me tortured with, you can head on over to my Patreon and join my art nerd community and let me know that there. Um, I found that these were fairly easy to use. Um, I was able to render a pretty decent little illustration. It sure beats the heck out of the Crayola illustration I did. In fact, I might actually have that handy because I have, oh, I took, I took so many examples out of it. Let me see if I have it in here. Doop, doop, doop. That's Crayola, uh, what's it called? But not Crayola watercolors. Mm, nope, I don't have it in here. So, but you can find the scan for that at natosuit.blogspot.com and search for Crayola in my search bar and it should come up fairly quickly. Uh, there is a fair amount of glycerin. You guys can see how shiny that is. It's either glycerin or gum Arabic, but I didn't have the sloughing problems that I've had with other cheap brands. I was able to layer, I was able to blend, I was able to mix colors fairly well. Um, Saturation is not the greatest, but that's kind of to be expected with children's watercolor. So if you are looking for a very inexpensive introduction to watercolor that you get a lot of paint, very accessible to use, um, very easy to use, and you can find this in a lot of places, I recommend the Yarko watercolors. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you again really soon. Bye.